This video is sponsored by Linode. No matter what technology stack you build on, Linode makes it easy for both beginners and power users to host apps, sites, and projects in the cloud. To get $20 towards your new account, visit linode.com slash traversy. Hey, what's going on guys? So in this video I want to talk a little bit about escaping tutorial hell or tutorial purgatory. And if you've never heard that expression, it, it bas it's basically where you're learning to code and you're, you become super dependent on watching either YouTube tutorials or online courses, whatever it might be. And then you go to create something on your own and you're completely lost and you don't even know where to start. So I'm just going to kind of share my experience with you. Um, and what prompted me to make this video is, you know, I get a lot of requests to look at, at portfolios and resumes and stuff like that. And uh, I looked at one a few days ago and three of the four projects were from my YouTube channel were from like, they were like small projects that I did on my channel. And, you know, I, I have to be honest with the guy. So I said, I don't, I don't mean to be harsh, but you know, it's not, it's not going to benefit you to just do tutorials and put them on your resume or on your portfolio and then send them off to employers. Um, and it's not about me caring. I, I mean, you guys are free to do that if you want. I just, I wouldn't recommend it or at least the project without changing it or, you know, adding to it or whatever. Um, and there's a few reasons. One is because they could be recognized, especially if it's from like a Udemy course, a popular Udemy course. Over and over, I've seen like Colt Steel projects, Steven Grinder projects, my own projects on people's portfolios unchanged. Um, and I, they, you know, that they can recognize that because they see so many different projects. So that's one reason. Um, but the more important reason is because you need that experience of building stuff on your own. Um, following a tutorial is only half the battle. So searching things, looking things up, um, you know, testing things out, debugging, that, that's the other half, and that's really important. And you only get that from building your own projects. So what I suggest doing when you watch a tutorial or a course is deconstruct it. Deconstruct the, um, the concepts of the, the project. So if you watch a to-do list, how to build a to-do list with React or Django or whatever, whatever it might be, it could be anything at all. Um, it's not about building the stupid to-do list. It's about what you learn while you're building it. So write down the concepts. You're going to learn how to connect to a database. You're going to learn most likely some kind of abstraction layer, you know, Mongoose, SQLize, something like that, or even straight SQL queries. Um, you're going to learn how to structure the application. You're going to learn how to create the UI, how to connect the UI to the back end, maybe even host it. Some tutorials, uh, you know, have hosting involved. So there's a lot of things you're going to learn. A lot of valuable things can be learned from a to-do list app. But if you look at it from the point of, I'm going to build a to-do list, it's, you're not, it's, it doesn't benefit you that much. And a huge mistake that people make is they just watch it build a to-do list, and then they stop and move on to the next one. And, you know, that might be good for me for ad revenue because you're just watching video after video, but I wouldn't suggest doing that. I would suggest watching it, really understanding it, going through the whole thing, and then taking those concepts that you learned and building something else from it. Okay, start over, create a brand new folder, build something different. If it's a to-do to list app that you watched, build a workout tracker. You know, so you have different data, different data types, maybe even switch up the database or something like that. You're going to have a different UI. If you use Bootstrap in the tutorial, don't use it here. Um, there's a lot of things you can do to change it and make it a completely different project. Uh, maybe connect, find some kind of workout API that you can bring in, maybe add authentication. Um, and this brings me to my next point, which is combining tutorials. So you might want to take this workout tracker that you build from the concepts of the to-do list and then watch another tutorial on authentication, maybe JSON web tokens, sessions, whatever it might be, OAuth, and then, you know, do that tutorial and then integrate it into your workout trainer, um, workout tracker application. So that way you, you're, you're building on to this, this app that is yours, but you, you know, you learn those concepts from the tutorial and, you know, that's really the best advice that I can give. And that's, that's what has helped me out is building my own stuff based off what I learned from other courses and tutorials. Um, the goal is never to stop watching tutorials. It's just to 
make them more efficient in, in your learning, at least, you know, in my opinion. Um, so another thing you can do to kind of break out of tutorial hell is to uh, look at other people's code. So tutorials are one thing because they, you know, they have hand-holding and basically showing you what everything is and all that. But if you look at someone else's code on GitHub, that is, you know, something that is, is what you're into or learning, React or whatever it might be. And you go through it and you really try to understand it, look at lines of code and Google certain methods that you don't understand, figure it out, figure out how it works. That, I think, is, is, gives you some really good experience, like real life experience, because when you get a job, you're going to get code bases thrown at you that you have to comb through and, you know, whether it's add a feature or debug or fix issues, whatever it might be, this gives you some real world experience other than just following a tutorial. So I would definitely recommend just going on GitHub, looking for certain projects um, and just looking at the code. All right. And that brings me to the next one, which is contributing to open source, which is also a very good idea to kind of break out a tutorial hell and have you do something that is really productive on your own. And, um, you know, it could be the code that you've been looking at trying to understand. Maybe you see somewhere where you could add a feature uh, or maybe you can look at the issues and find some issue to fix and make a pull request. And even if your pull request gets denied, that's that's fine. At least you have the experience of actually diving in and trying to do something, add something of your own, and submitting it. At least you have that experience. Um, another tip that I have is to stick with a certain set of technology, stick with a stack. I mean, there's certain things that you just have to learn, like Git, you know, how to, you know, a text editor you need to learn. Um, but when you choose a language, uh, framework, stuff like that, stick with it. Um, don't bounce around unless you're just, just starting, like, if you are trying to figure out if you want to work with React, Angular, or Vue, it's fine to watch, you know, watch all three of my crash courses. No, it's fine to um, just kind of skip around a little bit then. But once you really find out what you want to do, what what is easiest for you, um, stick with it. You know, you don't have to watch every crash course that I or anyone else releases. And I think that that really overwhelms people. They think that they have to watch every single video and they have to learn every single technology that uh, someone like me puts out. And it's just not true. You don't have to. You want to stick with, um, you know, what you want to do. For If you want to just do it for fun or whatever, that's fine. But don't get overwhelmed about learning, I don't know, WebAssembly or something like that that you're not going to be using in your career. Just do that maybe on the weekend for fun or whatever, you know, on the side. Um, so definitely stick with a stack. Another thing I would suggest doing is algorithms and challenges, and it might not seem productive. Uh, I've worked for a company, but I also come from mostly from the freelancing world and, you know, having my own business. So any of you guys that are freelancers, you know that your time is, is precious, and doing algorithms just seemed like a complete waste of time to me for a long time back, you know, years ago. But I've realized that it's basically like doing push-ups for your mind, you know, and, and it helps you solve problems faster. It helps you learn syntax and learn different methods that you might not have known about. And just it, it makes you a better programmer, which in turn allows you to be more productive and do things faster and better, you know, write better code uh, and just, you know, be a better developer. So I would definitely suggest that in 2020, I'm basically, uh, I'm going to be adding um, I don't know if I'm going to do a series or whatever, but I'm going to do more uh, fundamentals, challenges, algorithms, data structures, stuff like that, um, you know, in addition to you know, frameworks and all that stuff. So that's something I plan on doing. Uh, another thing I would suggest doing is, is joining a community. And this could be either in real life or online. I know as programmers, a lot of us are very antisocial, including myself. Um, but you might want to go to a meetup, you know, go start, join a meetup, meet people talking about pr programming and technology. That's going to help you break out a tutorial hell. Um, if you want to do stuff online, you have Discord, Slack, there's forums you can join. The Free Code Camp forum is great. Uh, even in YouTube comments, you know, just interacting with people. Uh, I, I created a, a Discord server called the Developer Hangout a few years ago which I don't really go into much anymore just because I'm so busy, but 
there's a lot of help there if you you know if you get stuck people can help you out you can get ideas from there people post their projects that you can look at so i think that joining an online community can can really benefit you um, you also want to use other resources specifically documentation uh, courses go out of date very quickly and as a content creator it's very frustrating because you know we spend all this time creating a course and then a week later react updates or something and um, things get deprecated and people complain and leave bad reviews but I mean I'm not gonna rant on that but my point is that frameworks and languages and whatever they update and the documentation is always going to be your most accurate source. I'm not going to say it's the best because some documentation really, really sucks. Some of it isn't even worth it, but for the most part, you know, it's going to have the most um, up-to-date information. So you always want to be friendly with the documentation in addition to tutorials. And then the last one I have is just start working. And I know that's easier said than done. This is the, basically the last step. Uh, you know, you're going to have to do a lot more before you actually start working. But when you start working, you're going to be pulled out of tutorial hell, whether you like it or not, because there's no tutorial to follow anymore. You're going to get your requirements that you have to do, and you're going to have to figure it out. And that's why I said, you know, you want to build your own projects. You want to look at other people's code, contribute to open source. Everything that I've said up, up to this point is to prepare you for that real world experience as a programmer because you're gonna be doing a lot of research, you're gonna um, be dealing with a team, so that's why I said join a community. Everything that I've said is to prepare you for getting that job um, and not being completely overwhelmed and you know having horrible imposter syndrome and stuff like that because I mean that happens to a lot of us including myself. So that's it, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this and took something from it. Um, I'm just trying to share kind of my experience and, and what's helped me out, and hopefully I can help a few people out. So that's it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.